Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to Ashford United Methodist Church. This is our uh, online service, our virtual service. Uh, we uh, thank you for being with us. My name is Irv White. I'm the pastor here. Uh, we like to refer to the um, first five minutes of our uh, virtual service as our Sunday shout out. This is an opportunity for us to have a little virtual meet and greet to say good morning to each and every one of you. It is a great uh, Sunday. Happy Sunday to you. Can you believe it? It's the last Sunday of February. We're two months into 2022. This year is just flying by, uh, but I believe the Lord is up to something. And so, uh, listen, it is up to us to keep up with whatever the Lord is doing. So good morning. I'll say hello to some of you in just a minute, but I like to begin uh, each uh, virtual service with a psalm. And I'm really liking a uh, Psalm 92. And so I'm going to share a couple of verses of Psalm 92. I, I hope it will minister to you. Uh, the psalmist writes, it is good to give thanks to the Lord. And that's true. To sing praises to the Most High. It is good to proclaim your unfailing love in the morning, your faithfulness in the evening, accompanied by a, teen, a ten string instrument, a harp and the melody of a lyre. I don't have a lyre. I don't have a harp. I don't have a ten string instrument, but I have my voice and I can give God praise. You thrill me, Lord, with all you have done for me. I sing for joy because of what you have done. Oh, Lord, what great works you do and how deep are your thoughts. Only a simpleton would not know and only a fool would not understand this. And that is true. So listen, God is good. It's good to give him praise. Happy Sunday. Don't just give praise on Sunday, but Monday through Sunday in Jesus name. So let's say hello to some folk who are signing in this morning. Good morning, Ken Turk. How are you, sir? I hope you're well. Uh, maybe it's a little bit warmer on your side than it is on mine, but it's a uh, I doubt it. It's a little chilly here in uh, Houston today, but we've been on a roll as far as the cold weather goes. Hey, Alice Hastings James, good morning to you. How are you uh, and the grandbaby doing? I hope uh, all is well. Always good to hear from you. I hope to see you uh, in the sanctuary soon and very soon. Hey, Carol Peroni, we missed you in the sanctuary last Sunday, but uh, prayerfully you'll be with us this Sunday. Always good to see you on our virtual service. Hey, Lorna, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Hope you are well, God bless you. It's uh, Leonard and Judy Kurger uh, signing on. Uh, as always, thank you so much for being with us. Man, I love you guys. Judy, are you baking anything good these days? Have you got any good recipes you wanna share? Better yet, just making, no, you know what? Don't make it and don't send it over. God, Scratch that from from the records. All right. Hey, good morning, Jack. Hey, Jack. How are you, sir? Good morning. Always good to hear from you. Uh, my lovely wife, Lorraine, uh, sending uh, hugs and kisses this morning. Well, you're awfully fresh, aren't you? Uh, good morning to you. God bless you. Happy Sunday. Looking forward to seeing you uh, soon and very soon. Hey, Janila. God bless you. I hope you're doing well. Cheetah, good morning to you. God bless you and uh, your family. Hey, Fern Hubbard. How's my friend Buddy doing? I hope Buddy's the cat, by the way. I hope Buddy's doing good. Hey, Jenny Smith, good morning to you. My mother-in-law in Tuskegee, Alabama, God bless you. Hey, Sharon, good morning to you. Uh, looking forward to seeing you and your husband, Hugh Saunders, uh, in church today. God bless you all. It's Sherry Antonio. Good morning, Sherry. I saw Sherry, uh, my wife and I, on um, Friday night. We had a, a great time along with the booths. We went to see uh, Hamilton. The, uh, the, the play down at the Hobby Center it was a great, great performance. It was good to see you, Sherry, and your husband. Hey, Victoria, God bless you. Hope you're doing well. Nice to hear from you. Andy Adams, God bless you and your family. I hope all is well with you. Uh, Karen uh, Sevier is going to be joining us. Yah. Yah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. She says a happy Sunday. We'll hear from you in just a little bit. Hey, Jackie Mason Moore, we're continuing to pray for you and your family. I hope all is well. So listen, looking forward to today's service. We're going to finish up our sermon series on vision, a discern, discover and deploy. We're going to talk about deploying your vision. So God's giving you this vision, right? You're ready to go. But what does go look like? What what does that really look like? And is it possible for you to wait while you go? That's an interesting question, and we'll try to dig into that in just a few. God bless you all. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. So glad you're here. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to be intentional about rejoicing and being glad in it. God bless you.
Good morning, Ashford Church family. So glad you're here. We're together again, just praising the Lord. We're together again, all one accord. And we are, and it's so good for us to be together again. We may not be together physically, but we are here because we are one in Christ Jesus. Such a blessing. Thank you for just being so wonderful uh, to show up each and every week for this virtual worship service. And then I would like to say thank you to all of those who are joining us at 11 o'clock a.m. as you do each and every week for our in-person worship service. And I look forward to seeing you very soon. I'd also like to mention this coming Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, kicking off our season of Lent. There'll be a few uh, opportunities for you to receive your ashes, and Pastor Irv is going to explain that later, um, but I do look forward to seeing you. I would like to invite you all to sing this hymn with me, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. I want, I'm going to give you a chance to uh, get your smartphone, your tablet, whatever electronic device you use to find the lyrics to Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. And if you have a hymn book at home, then grab your hymn book. found every blessing tune my heart to see thy grace streams of mercy never ceasing call for songs of loudest praise teach me some melodious song that Song by flaming tongues above, praise the mount I'm fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Here I raise my ever. It's time for today's message. We're wrapping up our sermon series titled Vision, Discern, Discover, Deploy. Well, today I want to talk to you about what it means to deploy your God-given vision. 
Through discernment and discovery, God has shown you all or part of his preferred plan for your future good success in accordance with Jeremiah 29, 11 that says, I know the plans I have for you, plans of good and evil to give you a future and a hope. So listen, that vision for you may be a business idea. It could be a strategy to improve your marriage or any other relationship. It could be a way to work smarter on your job. It could be an idea for a book or a community program or a ministry. It could be a thought about a side business that's going to help you create wealth and create jobs. It could be for you to go back to school. God has revealed to you something you may have never considered for yourself. But you know what? You took a spiritual gifts assessment. You discovered your, your strengths and you realize and appreciate now the uniqueness of your personality. Yes, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And what you never saw God doing through you, you now know is possible. You recognize that God has a vision for your life. You know what it is. Now it's time to deploy the vision. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to serve. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to come before your people to proclaim your word. Now, Lord, may everything I am about to say and do be inspired and instructed by the Holy Spirit so that your truth and nothing but your truth is spoken, received, and believed in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to use as a backdrop for this message today, Proverbs 29 and 18, and then Habakkuk, the second chapter, verses 2 and 3. They read as follows. First Proverbs. Where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Now Habakkuk, the second chapter, verses two and three. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision, make it plain on tablets so that a runner may read it. For there is still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks of the end and does not lie. If it seems to tarry, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, if you look at the dictionary definition of deploy, it is to move troops or equipment into position for military action. Deployment involves taking action with an intended outcome. Well, any a time there is military action, there is the probability of some sort of opposition. And so when it comes to deploying your God-given vision, there will likely be some haters out there who are not going to see what you see, and therefore they're going to consciously or subconsciously push back as you push forward. But there is also the enemy within us, and that's the fear in us. The fear of failure will keep a discerned and discovered vision in pause every single time. In his book, Normalizing Next, Olu Brown says that once you have discerned and discovered your vision, it is time to deploy the vision. It's time to take it out of cue. And then Brown uses a great example, I think, in his book about what happens when we place something in the digital cart on Amazon.com. You've done that. You place it in the cart, but you didn't complete the purchase. And then what happens is the algorithm on the site a few days later is going to send you a reminder that the things you said you wanted, they're still waiting for you to take further action. Your opportunity to purchase those things is still on hold. You have not completed the transaction. Those uh, uh, ear pods that you wanted, they're not producing any sound. That rake you wanted, that rake is not collecting any leaves. The vitamins you wanted, they are not helping your immune system. You discerned your vision. The vision was, is an Amazon Prime delivery at my doorstep. That's the vision. You, you discovered your vision. I want Apple, uh, ear pods. I want the, uh, the, the, the Bi Plus adjustable garden rake. I want the immune, uh, support gummies for adults with a black elderberry extract. But you never deployed the vision because you never clicked complete purchase. Was it fear? Was it lack of money? What was it? 
So I'm kind of being silly here uh, with this analogy, but I hope that you are getting my, my point. And the point is this, an undeployed vision is like not having a vision at all. So God tells Habakkuk to write the vision and then to make it plain so that a runner may see it. You see, Jewish prophets uh, would, would, would uh, write and display uh, their, their prophetic messages on these wooden writing tables. The table might be, uh, it might be out in the public, it, it might be in their home, or it may be in the temple. And so the idea was that uh, you didn't have to stop to read it. It was plain enough, large enough that uh, anybody running by, even quickly, could see it. And so the people in the marketplace, they could see it. The people uh, in a person's home, they could see it. Uh, the people in the temple, they could see it. The vision needed to be front and center. So Proverbs 29 and 18 just told us that without a vision, uh, without some sort of divine guidance, the people will perish. The vision protects and the vision directs. No vision, no Life. You can't just sit on the vision. You've got to work the vision. You, you can have tons of money, uh, and no vision and perish. You can have all kinds of time on your hands, but no vision and perish. You can have all the manpower and the volunteers in the world and no vision and perish. Vision matters. Write it, display it, know it, but you gotta work it. You gotta move it. You have to deploy it. So God isn't just telling Habakkuk to write and display the vision just so it can be seen and easily read and understood. No, he wants it on display as a constant reminder not to just look at it, but to do something with it. Your vision demands an action. Now check this out, though. Your call to action may be to take off in faith. Go. Your call to action, though, may be to wait in faith right now. Here's the deal. As long as your action gets its instruction from God, you're still running. So God tells Habakkuk, uh, he tells him the vision, and then he says, but you may have to wait. Wait on it. Wait on it. He told him not to get distracted by time. He's basically telling them, you know, you may think that the realization of the vision is running late, but it's not. He says, if it seems to tarry, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. You know, it kind of seems counterintuitive for waiting to be classified as an action. I mean, that's until you realize that doing the work to grow in faith and God confidence as God positions us to walk out our vision is not in action at all. You know, I was talking to uh, one of my uh, daughters uh, the other day about a vision she has for her life. So she, she seems very clear about what it is and where she will be, and she's actually ready to deploy. She's ready to go. But she's beginning to realize that her deployment process isn't going to look quite like she had envisioned it, not in her timing, but in God's timing. And so she's beginning to understand that God is calling her to action, but the action is pre-deployment, right? To faithfully prepare in some new ways, to faithfully repair in some old ways, and faithfully wait until God says it's really time to go. Isaiah 40, 31 says, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Faith without works is dead, and sometimes the hardest work we do is to wait in faith. Before we can run, Ashford, we've got to learn to walk without fainting. You better be very, very careful trying to run on a vision, trying to run on God's word, and you don't know God's word. 
I mean, God has given you a vision, yes, and then off you go, you're off you go, off you go to try to realize it. But along the way, then you encounter stuff, stuff. That stuff will knock the wind out of you if you're not careful. And so instead of running along, you know what we end up do? We, we, we end up finding ourselves so out of breath that we can't run anymore. We almost have to take a knee. So now we're walking and we're so out of breath. The next thing you know, we have spiritually fainted. You see, in the natural, fainting is the result when you have insufficient uh, oxygen to the brain. But when you try to run through life insufficient in the word of God, you are likely to faint spiritually. You don't want to faint spiritually. If you're going to deploy uh, the vision that God has given you, make sure that you uh, get enough strength. You get enough of God's word. You have enough faith that you can get through the fainting stage. If you get queasy over finances and money, you may not be ready to run. If you get queasy over a conflicts in relationships with friends or family or enemies, you may not be ready to run. If you get queasy just because you get rejected and you get ridiculed or somebody talks about you, you may not get ready to run. Galatians 6 and 9 says, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Ashford, some of us need to spend just a little more time in the pre-deployment stages so that God can build up our capacity to handle any unforeseen realities and we can walk and not faint. And then when God says go, we can take off and run and not get weary. We can mount up with wings like eagles. Discern, discover, deploy. God has a vision for your life. Embrace that vision. Discern that vision. Discover that vision. And trust God to call you into that vision to tell you what and how you need to do. Expect opposition. Yes, opposition is going to be there. There's going to be some pushback. But don't you be your greatest opposition. God's going to make it plain. God's going to build your capacity and trust God to use you as a catalyst to change your life, the lives of those around you, and for God, most importantly, to get the glory. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, it's always my prayer that this message today encouraged you, inspired you, called you to change some aspect of your life to the glory of God. Can we pray for you? We would love to pray for you and your family. Send us a prayer request to AUMC at ashfordumc.org. Our prayer team is standing by. Thank you, as always, for your generosity. If you'd like to share a gift with us, we would appreciate it. You can uh, send a gift via our website. Just go to ashfordumc.org and click the Give button. You can text the Give at my Ashford and the dollar sign to 73256. Of course, you can share your gift via the mail. Our address is 2201 South Derry Ashford Road in Houston, Texas, 77077. Lord, we thank you for the gifts and for the givers. We thank you, Lord, uh, for their generosity, their continued generosity. We promise, Lord, that we'll continue to be good and faithful stewards of the resources we receive so that we may become the church you've called us to be, a church just not in the community, but a church for the community. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you for being with us today. Uh, feel free to join us on any Sunday at 11 o'clock. We're here at 2201 South Derry Ashford Road. We would love for you and your family to worship with us in our sanctuary. And feel free to join us on Ash Wednesday uh, for our drive through ashes from 7.30 to 9 in the morning and from noon until 1 o'clock. And we'll also have a an in-sanctuary service at 7 o'clock on Ash Wednesday. We would love for you and your family to join us. Well, thank you again. I send you forth each and every a week with three questions. I provide the questions. You know the answers. Who's the head of this church? Jesus. Who is the church? We are the church. And what are we as a church called to do? We're called to serve. God bless you. I love you. I'll see you next Sunday.